What if I told you that a humble sweet potato holds the key to rewriting our understanding of ancient navigation and contact between continents? What if DNA evidence proves that Pacific Islanders reached the Americas 300 years before Columbus and that Filipino sailors might have been part of this incredible journey? Welcome back to Mythos Amit Raj, where we uncover the hidden stories of ancient civilizations. Today, we're diving into one of archaeology's most fascinating mysteries, the Sweet Potato Trail across the Pacific Ocean, and the shocking DNA evidence that's forcing us to reconsider everything we thought we knew about pre-Columbian contact between Asia and the Americas. This is the story of the world's greatest sailors, forgotten voyages, and a plant that traveled thousands of miles of open ocean centuries before Europeans even dreamed of crossing the Atlantic. Hey, history lovers, quick favor before we start. If you enjoy today's video, please help me reach 5,000 likes and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing historical stories. Let's start with the evidence that started it all. The sweet potato itself. The sweet potato, or Ipomoia batatas, is native to South America. There's no question about that. Archaeological evidence shows it was being cultivated in Peru as far back as 8,000 years ago. But here's the mystery. When Europeans first reached Polynesia in the 1700s, they found sweet potatoes already growing there, with Polynesian names like Kumara in New Zealand and Kumar in Easter Island. How did a South American plant end up thousands of miles away in the Pacific Islands, long before any known contact between these regions? For decades, scientists debated this puzzle. Some argued the sweet potato could have floated across the ocean naturally. Others insisted there must have been human contact, but it wasn't until recent DNA studies that we got our smoking gun. In 2013, researchers analyzed the DNA of sweet potato samples from across the Pacific and the Americas. What they found was stunning. The Polynesian sweet potatoes weren't just genetically similar to South American varieties, they were identical to specific cultivars from the coastal regions of Peru and Ecuador. But the real breakthrough came in 2018. Another DNA study pinpointed the timing. Polynesian varieties diverged from their South American ancestors around 1200 CE, give or take a century. This wasn't accidental drift across the ocean. This was deliberate human contact happening 300 years before Columbus set foot in the Caribbean. The sweet potato had become a botanical time capsule, preserving evidence of one of history's most remarkable voyages. So who made this incredible journey? The answer lies with the Polynesians, arguably the greatest navigators in human history. By 1200 CE, Polynesian sailors had already accomplished what seems impossible even today. They had colonized an area spanning nearly one-third of Earth's surface, from Hawaii in the north to New Zealand in the south and Easter Island in the east. They did this without compasses, without maps, without any of the navigation tools Europeans would later rely on. Instead, they used a sophisticated system of wayfinding that read the ocean itself. Polynesian navigators could determine their position and course by observing the stars, reading wave patterns, watching cloud formations, tracking bird migrations, and even feeling the subtle differences in ocean swells against their hulls. They memorized the position of over 200 stars and knew exactly which ones would guide them to specific islands. They understood that certain seabirds would fly back to land in the evening, effectively creating a 30-mile radius compass around every island. 
They knew that clouds would form differently over land versus open ocean, visible from 50 miles away. This wasn't primitive guesswork. This was a scientific system passed down through generations, as sophisticated as anything developed in Europe or Asia. Their vessels were equally impressive, double-hulled canoes up to 30 meters long, capable of carrying dozens of people, livestock and provisions for weeks at sea. They were fast, stable, and could sail against the wind using ingenious triangular sails. Around 1200 CE, it appears that some of these master navigators made the ultimate journey, 4,000 miles east to South America, where they encountered the sweet potato and brought it back across the Pacific. Now here's where our story takes a fascinating turn, one that connects directly to the Philippines and broader Austronesian seafaring culture. The Polynesians didn't emerge from nowhere. They were part of the great Austronesian expansion that began around 3000 BCE in what is now Taiwan and coastal China. These seafaring peoples spread across the Pacific and Indian Oceans in one of the most remarkable migrations in human history. And crucially, the Philippines was a central hub in this expansion. The Austronesian peoples who settled the Philippines developed their own extraordinary maritime technology. The most famous example is the Balangay, also called the Balanghai, traditional Filipino boats that were the backbone of inter-island trade and travel. These weren't simple canoes. Balangays were sophisticated plank-built vessels, 15 to 25 meters long, with outriggers for stability. They used wooden dowels and complex lashing techniques instead of nails, creating hulls that were both flexible and incredibly strong. They could carry 60 to 90 people and tons of cargo. The construction techniques of Balangays show remarkable similarities to later Polynesian vessel designs. Both used the sewn plank technique, both employed outriggers, and both were designed for long-distance ocean voyaging. More intriguingly, linguistic evidence shows deep connections. The word for boat in many Polynesian languages traces back to Proto-Austronesian roots found in Philippine languages. Navigation terms, sailing techniques, and even spiritual practices related to the sea show clear family resemblances across thousands of miles of ocean. Some researchers now propose a controversial but compelling theory that the great Polynesian voyagers who reached South America may have included people who either originated from or had recent ancestral connections to the Philippines and the broader Austronesian seafaring network. The genetic evidence supports this connection. Modern DNA studies show that Polynesians carry genetic markers that trace back through the Philippines and island Southeast Asia, creating a family tree of Pacific navigation that might extend all the way to the shores of South America. Of course, not everyone agrees with these theories, and science thrives on healthy debate. Some scholars argue that while the sweet potato evidence is solid, we shouldn't overstate the extent of contact. They point out that we have no clear archaeological evidence of Polynesian settlements or artifacts in South America beyond the sweet potato itself. If there was sustained contact, where are the tools, the pottery, the clear signs of cultural exchange? Others question the Filipino connection specifically. They argue that by 1200 CE, Polynesians had been separated from their Philippine cousins for nearly 2000 years. While they shared ancient ancestors, the actual voyages to South America were almost certainly from Eastern Polynesia, perhaps from the Marquesas Islands, not directly from the Philippines. 
There's also the question of whether contact was one-way or two-way. Did Polynesians only visit South America and return, or did they establish any kind of ongoing relationship? Did any South Americans make the return journey to Polynesia? A fascinating piece of evidence emerged in 2020. DNA studies found traces of Native American ancestry in some modern Polynesian populations, particularly on islands like Rapa Nui, Easter Island. The genetic signature suggests contact occurred around 1200 CE, right when the sweet potato evidence indicates. But this raises more questions than it answers. Was this a single voyage, multiple voyages, or something more complex? Were there shipwrecked sailors? intentional settlement attempts. The archaeological record remains frustratingly sparse. Ocean voyaging is hard to trace because most evidence would have been on boats that are long gone, or on coastlines that have changed dramatically over 800 years. Recent advances in genetics and archaeology are slowly filling in the gaps. In 2021, a comprehensive DNA study of sweet potato varieties across the Pacific confirmed multiple introduction events. The sweet potato didn't reach Polynesia just once. It was likely carried on several separate voyages, suggesting this wasn't a one-time accident but part of a pattern of contact. Studies of chicken bones have added another layer. Chickens are native to Asia and chicken bones found in Chile, dating to pre-Columbian times, initially suggested Polynesian contact. However, more recent DNA analysis has cast doubt on this evidence, with some bones turning out to be from European chickens introduced later. The debate continues. What's becoming clear is that the Pacific Ocean in pre-Columbian times was far more connected than we once believed. The old narrative of isolated peoples waiting for European discovery is dead. Instead, we're uncovering a complex web of voyaging, trade and cultural exchange spanning thousands of miles. The Filipino and broader Austronesian contribution to this network is undeniable. Even if Filipinos weren't physically present on the canoes that reached South America in 1200 CE, the maritime technology, navigation techniques, and seafaring culture that made those voyages possible had deep roots in the Philippines and island Southeast Asia. The sweet potato mystery reminds us that history is full of surprises. A simple plant carries evidence of voyages that would terrify most modern sailors. DNA tells stories that no written record preserved, and the ocean, which we think of as a barrier, was actually a highway for some of the world's most skilled navigators. Whether or not Filipino sailors personally made it to South America, the Philippines played a crucial role in the maritime culture that made such voyages possible. The balangays that sailed between Philippine islands were technological cousins to the canoes that crossed the Pacific. The navigation techniques practiced in Southeast Asian waters were refined and carried across thousands of miles of open ocean. This is a story of human courage, ingenuity and connection. It's a reminder that before borders, before nations, before the age of exploration that Europeans claim as their own, People were already exploring, already connecting, already proving what humans can accomplish with knowledge, skill and determination. What do you think? Could ancient Filipinos have been part of these trans-Pacific voyages? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this deep dive into ancient maritime mysteries, hit that like button and subscribe for more stories from the forgotten corners of history. Until next time, keep exploring the myths and mysteries of our past.